And those of you who do still watch this team and and think they're going to be okay, you're probably, you know, the people who are in abusive relationships. You get the crap kicked out of you by your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And then you go to work and you're like, I slipped in the shower as you're just covered with bruises. The feeling you get when the Celtics win is like you had sex with your mom and then you found out that you're adopted. <sighs> Look, I haven't talked about the Celtics in, I don't know, a couple of months. Normally, I'm uploading a lot of videos throughout the year. It's been a while. And uh, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason. Uh, I hate this team. I absolutely hate this team. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why I hate this team so much, um, why there is absolutely no hope for the future, why there's really nothing good. I have nothing good to say in this video at all. So I would just say, if you um, don't like negative people or you want to be one of those, those green teamers, it's like, come on guys, you know, like things are going to be okay. You might just not want to watch this video. You might just want to turn it off because I have uh, nothing, nothing good to say. Well, that's not true. Uh, we could talk about some good things. Have you watched John Morant? play basketball uh he's incredible he's so much fun to watch have you watched Lamelo ball play basketball uh a savant a passing savant who just makes all of his teammates better uh beautiful beautiful basketball player have you watched evan mobley play for the cleveland cavaliers future defensive player of the year probably he's completely changed that entire franchise uh, just from how good he is defensively and positionally he changes their entire outlook and their future. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff that you can talk about. Just none of it has to do with the Boston Celtics. So, yeah, I've been quiet. You know, my mother used to tell me, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Um, my mother never told me that. But it's very true for this team. I have been mum because I have nothing good to say. Everything I have to say about this team is terrible. And I don't even know where to start. And honestly, I don't even care where I'm going to start. I actually want this video to be jumbled and dis disoriented and out of order and just random and terrible just to reflect the way this team plays basketball. So uh, I don't have a script. I don't even really have bullet points. I'm just going to ramble about how much I hate this team and all the things I hate about it. And it's going to be a mess. And that is uh, your Boston Celtics. So the season is about halfway over, and as of the way things stand today is the Boston Celtics are <laughs> they're not even in the play-in. This is, wow. They are the uh, 11th ranked team in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> they're, they're uh, yeah, behind 10 other teams, including the New York Knicks, who are having a terrible year. Not as bad as our Boston Celtics. Uh, so yeah, we are 21 and 22, more than halfway through the year. We're a 500 team. We have been 500 team, you know, for two years basically now, and we're going to continue to be a 500 team. And it's the absolute worst thing that you can be in the NBA is a 500 team. And I've been saying this for a while now, and everybody thinks I'm crazy. I've been talking about trying to tank. I wanted to tank last year. Uh, I wanted to tank this year. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. Yeah, I'm I'm the crazy one. Let's just keep being 500 and drafting Aaron Neesmith and not making the playoffs or getting bounced in the first round. That's way better. That's a way better idea. We don't want to upset the Jays. Oh, my God. What if we upset the Jays and they left? Ah, uh, ah, uh, we play so well with them. Ah. Uh. <sighs> anyway. Everything about this team uh, stinks. And to be honest with you, and I know this is going to trigger a lot of people right off the bat, I haven't watched a Celtics game in months. I think I watched the first five or ten games this year, and then I just asked myself, like, I looked in the mirror and I said, do you hate yourself? Like, do you not want to enjoy your life? Are you just sick of being happy? Because Every time I watch this team, I just want to blow my brains out. So I just stopped watching. What I do do 
is I listen to every single post game show on CLNS Media. I look at the box scores. So I follow the team because obviously I'm still a fan. Hello, my name is Adam and I am an addict. What is my drug of choice? The Boston Celtics. Uh, I use it to hurt myself and those around me and I can't get away. That's basically what being a Boston Celtics fan is at this point. You're just killing yourself and anybody who you care about. My girlfriend hates them more than I do because every time I talk about them, I get so angry and so miserable that she's miserable. She hates the Boston Celtics more than anything. And that's because of me, but it's really because of the Boston Celtics. So yeah, uh, where was I? Don't watch the game. And I really hope there's a bunch of you out there that are like, that means you're not a real fan. You're not a real fan. You don't even watch the games. Because I love it when other people tell me how I should be a fan, what makes a, a real fan. That's great. Please just comment below and tell me that I'm not a real fan. I'd love to love to hear that. Um, and those of you who do still watch this team and, and think they're going to be okay, you're probably, you know, the people who are in abusive relationships and get the crap kicked out of you by your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And then you go to work and you're like, I slipped in the shower as you're just covered with bruises. So that's good. Good for you. Good for you for being, being so resilient, being a, a great fan. Um, so, yeah. Whenever I see the Celtics are playing, I just immediately become like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Oh, well, I w probably wasn't going to have a good day anyway. So why even bother? Why even bother watching this team? Uh, you know, they stink. They're terrible. They don't try. They don't play together. They don't seem to like each other. Coach is a joke. Everything is bad. And even when they win, like <laughs> the feeling you get when the Celtics win is like you had sex with your mom and then you found out that you're adopted. That's like that's what I feel like when the Celtics win. It's not good. It's just less bad, I guess. So, yeah, at this point, we, we know that um, both of the Jays, you know, people are like, oh, they, they can't play together. They can play together. This huge argument, can they or can they not play together? Of course they can play together. They play together. They play together every, every game that they're healthy. You can also put ketchup on salmon if you want it doesn't mean it's good and that's that's what they are they they are ketchup on salmon yes they can play together they don't do anything together they don't run any actions together they don't screen for each other they hardly pass to each other and they don't make any of their teammates better and at this point you know there's a reason why i'm wearing my paul pierce jersey i have my jalen brown jersey and my jason tatum jersey buried in the closet i don't even want to wear them anymore I'm so tired of watching these two guys play basketball, and it's depressing that it's come to this point, but that's that's where we're at, um, and it's not going to change. So that's the the good news. <laughs> uh, our coach sucks. Look, Ime sucks. He's terrible, um, but it's not his fault. We can't blame Ime Adoka because let's not forget that Brad Stevens went through this exact same crap last year. He literally, like, <laughs> here's a guy who's, like, his whole – his whole like goal in life was to coach. His dream was to coach. And this team sucks so bad that it just drained the joy of his dream out. And he just quit. He got fired. He's a he's in a different career now because of this team. And this was a guy who at one point was considered to be one of the best coaches in the NBA. And uh, he couldn't coach this team last year. So let's not get crazy and say it's Udoka's fault. It's not Udoka's fault. It's everybody's fault everything is wrong it's the jays it's marcus it's al horford it's all of our young players that are terrible it's our player development it's our trainers it's uh Izoka. it's brad stevens it's everybody everybody's fault everyone's to blame there's not a single person that's i mean i guess you could say grant williams <laughs> oh my god is that the world we're living in now or the only person you can't blame for how bad this is going is grant williams Oh, God. Um, so, yeah, everything is wrong. The coach is terrible. And the thing I hate about Adoka, besides everything, is, like, he runs his mouth, man. Like, he talked this big, big game about how he was going to hold players accountable and all this stuff. And he doesn't. What he does is he lets them do whatever they want. 
And then he runs his mouth about them in the media, which is like, is that better than what Brad Stevens did where he would never criticize them? Like, I, I don't know. I think they're both pretty terrible. At the start of the year, I know Udoka had this big thing about like, we're not going to bitch to the refs. And I know I keep going back to this, but like <laughs> Tatum has just been bitching to the refs all year. And Adoka just gave up on it. Like he, cause he doesn't have the spine. So this is, this is what's ridiculous. Uh, and Brad Stevens did the same thing and he's the GM now. So it's not going to change. And Adoka is the coach now. Like we have these people running this team that are convinced that we're like, Mm, this is a good team, and mm, we're just a, a couple of couple of small moves away from mm, from really yeah being to be able to compete with the best teams in the NBA, and we're not, and we haven't been in a long time, and that mentality is so harmful to this team because what you get is you get guys like Stevens and Adoka who just play all the veterans who who make all of these moves like keeping. We gotta keep Step Shemi Ojale and trade away Desmond Bain because we don't we don't need any more young players. We gotta sign J- Josh Richardson to an extension, and we gotta bring Al Horford's corpse back. And you know, every single move and every single decision and every single game, every rotation is made with this mindset of like we have to win every game we possibly can. Just so harmful to this team because we're not a good team. And all it does is it keeps us in that middle ground where we're never going to get a good draft pick and we're never going to make any noise. And it's just going to continue that way forever. It's just going to be this disgusting circle of garbage, it's like a human centipede of just people eating each other's crap in a circle forever, infinitely. And that's, that's what this team is. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I look at look at me. I'm a mess. Being invested in this team is is really bad for your mental health, which is again why I don't watch the games anymore. Why I haven't talked about this team in several months. There's just look, it's not just that it's bad now, it's that there's also no hope for the future. Like Brad Stevens is not going to make some big trade. The trade deadline is coming up. Like one of the rumors I heard was like, we're going to bring back Jeff Green. Oh, great. Jeff Green's going to solve all our problems. There are no moves that this team can make that that are going to help this team. Nothing. There's nothing they can do. We have no assets besides the Jays, and they're not going to trade the Jays because they have it stuck in their head that you cannot trade uh, these players that are young and really, really good. And I get it. Like, when I talk about trading Tatum or trading Brown or both of them, I don't say that because I think it's going to make the team better. Like it's not, it's not going to make the team better. It's going to make them worse. And that's what I want. I actually want this team to be worse because I feel like at this point, this team is so broken that the only way to make it better is to actually make it worse and to build up. You have to build it over again. You have to get a guy who literally just changes this team and you're, and you're not going to, that guy is not coming. So, and I don't think you can even get him in a trade for either one of the Jays. But I mean, just like look at look at Toronto. Toronto mailed in last year; they stunk, and now they have Scotty Barnes, and they're building something interesting there. Look at Cleveland. Cleveland uh, has stunk for a long time, and then literally just from drafting Mobley, boom, their team just changed. Same with Charlotte when they drafted Lamelo Ball. Same with the Grizzlies when they got Morant. Now look, those are a lot of those guys are like top three picks. And, you know, that's the issue is this Celtics team is a far way away from being that kind of lottery team. But my whole point is we shouldn't be. My whole point is I think we're closer to being a lottery team than we are to being a relevant playoff team. And I seem to be the only person who thinks like this. So, yeah, what are we doing? Every time I, I watch this team, that's, that's what I think is like, what, what is the point? What is the point of this team even existing? Uh, Grant Williams is our best young player. Josh Richardson has been great. And like, that's the best thing I can say about this team. It's terrifying. You know, like all of our young players are terrible. They're all terrible. I mean, I'm convinced that Aaron Neesmith is actually special needs, that he's autistic or there's just something wrong with him. Like every time I watch him play basketball, I'm reminded of that 
Saturday Night Live skit with Mike Myers, where he was like an autistic kid that ate too much chocolate and like pulled the jungle gym behind him, like freaking out. Like that's Aaron Neesmith playing basketball. He's just, I've just given up on him completely. Uh, Romeo Langford is made out of warm butter. Like he just melts. You could put like a 20 watt light bulb on him and he would just melt and strain his neck or get hurt. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Does he may hate white people? Like why can't Peyton Pritchard ever play? You know, like what, what the Celtics have done. Oh my God. There's just so many mistakes and issues with their recognizing of like players that have skill and players that don't um, their, their attitude towards developing young players. And yeah, it's just, we've done it. We've screwed it up for so many years now. We've made so many bad draft picks and then we just refused to give them playing time. So that they've developed, so they had any chance of developing that, that now we have nothing, you know, we have, we have no assets and um yeah, and 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 what you do see is all the players that we whiffed on just crushing it in other places. You know, you can look at I know I won't shut up about Desmond Maine, but you know, we drafted this guy and literally traded him away for nothing because we wanted to keep Shemi Ojale. And now he's like the second best player on Memphis, you know, one of the best play- teams in the NBA. Uh, you can look at guys like what is it, Garrett Garrison Matthews, who we had on our summer league team, I think, and and then we just cut him and now he's like blowing up in Houston. Um Max Struess, I think, was another guy we had on our summer league team that's now uh, playing really well in Miami. So it's just a lack of recognition of players that have skill and then just drafting players that don't. And then even if you draft a player who might have skill, you're never going to find out because we're so desperate to claw out victories that we're playing like seven, eight man short rotations, not giving any of our young players time because we've got to just get that win, get back to 500. So It's a disgusting, disgusting time to be a Boston Celtics fan. Um, There's no direction to this team. There's no hope. It's a circle. What we're doing is a circle, you know, like when you flush the toilet and you're watching your turd just go down the drain. That's basically um, the direction of this team. And again, uh, no hope, no hope at all for the future. If I were you, if I could give you one valuable piece of advice as a Celtics fan, I would say, I would say stop doing this to yourself <laughs> first of all i would say do you care about your own self like health, like mental health and self-care do you care about these things and stop watching this team uh come back in 10 years come back in like eight to ten years and maybe it will be better because um you know i've been watching the celtics i've been a fan of this team for god i don't know like 25 30 years and this is the worst feeling I've ever had with a Celtics team this year and last year I've never felt worse about being a Celtics fan and I'm and I'm talking about like I watched years of like Rick Pitino destroying this team I watched like you know Vili Patapenko when he was our center and Sherman Douglas and like when our best player was Rick Fox I mean like I have some pretty grim memories but I don't ever remember a team just being so easy to hate um other than this team this year and and last year. And again, it's just the future is just so bleak. So when I talk about trading the Jays, I know my last Celtics video was talking about trading Jason Tatum. And I'm sure a lot of people think that's absolutely insane. I'm not saying that that's going to make us better. Uh, I, I do think it'll make us worse. But I actually want us to be worse. Because being worse is something that we can do. Being worse is a direction that we can go in, that we can actively pursue. Whereas I don't believe that we can actively pursue being better. I just don't think it's available to us right now. So I I, I feel like we have two choices. We can continue to just be like this barely sub 500 team and just fighting to be 500, which is just terrible. Or we can just blow it all up and actively pursue being worse in the hopes that eventually it gets better. I really do believe that those are the only two options. And uh, I've been all about blowing it up for two years now. And I, and I haven't seen anything this year to make me feel like that's not still the, the way to do it. But again, you know, when there is no solution, you, you, come, you start coming up with crazy ideas. And that's basically where I'm at with this team. Um, I don't really want to talk about Jason Tatum because I did a lot of that in the last video. 
my feelings haven't changed about him at all. I just, I know that his numbers probably look okay. I know his shooting splits are down, uh, but I just hate the feeling I get watching him play basketball. Like there's just something not right mentally about his approach uh, that I just, and look, will he maybe get it? He's still, what, 23 years old? Maybe, uh, but you know, I'm not going to watch right now to find out. And then Jalen, I don't know, like I always loved Jalen and I don't want to bag on Jalen too much, but you know, his inability to make anybody around him better is, is pretty shocking for that. Like for the level of basketball player that he's supposed to be his inability, his complete inability to like incorporate his teammates uh, is pretty shocking. And also, you know, he's supposed to be a two-way player and I just don't think he's been a two-way player. The last time I remember Jalen Brown being a two-way player was uh, was it two years ago when we played Toronto in, in the playoffs, and he like locked down uh, Siakam, and even that year was that was just like a, a brief moment. You know, he hasn't been a consistent um, he hasn't been consistent on the defensive end in a long, long time, and I don't think it's ever coming back. So yeah, well, that's my gloom and doom. I just felt like I haven't talked about the Celtics in a couple of months. I had to say something. I had to break my silence. And uh, <laughs> most of you are probably like, you know what? Go back, go back to being silent. Silence better. Um, but yeah, that's it. I don't really have anything else to share. Um, I guess you can comment and tell me how you feel about the Celtics. I doubt you're still out there. If I were you, I, I would have turned this video off a long time ago. But if you are still here, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Am I am I too uh, too down this team? Is there a reason to be optimistic? Is Grant Williams the next Tim Duncan? Um, whatever you want to share with me below, I'll take a look. And uh, yeah, other than that, thanks for watching.